fight I feel some type of way about. I want to really, really dive into. Um, yeah, I want to take a deep dive on this one. Give it its time. Um, I, I disagree with the decision, and I want to get into why we have um, what the fight of most people were looking forward to, even more than some of the higher rankings. Like I know me, like I was looking forward to this fight more than the Moran's font fight, more than any of the fights up to this point, more than the I, Hardy Tiber. I was could not wait for this. Fight. So I was looking forward super hard to this fight. I actually did put in a five way parlay yesterday. Hit every single one of them except for this fight. Which I didn't pick a winner in. I just picked to not go the distance, right? You that think was that's a safe smart bet? bet. That seemed like a smart bet. But appreciate that. But you know, <laughs> it's like what the fuck? Yeah, I feel you. Um, it was essentially a toss up. Uh, Michelle Pahea minus one hundred five underdog versus Chaos Williams. Yes, that's his real name, Chaos. Love uh, it. Uh, not? K- Kalen is his real first name. K A another nickname, right? The Ox Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a so bitch. Right. So here's, here's, what, here's that what, here's that story real mean. fast, right? All right, all right? So he used to be Kalen Chaos Williams, right, in the regional scene. Then the UFC and marketing starts calling him Chaos. Chaos. Oh, it's Chaos Williams. Chaos Williams. He's smart. He ran with it. He was like, well, I'll just be Chaos Williams and I'll just be K it's still K Williams, like because when you see him on like listings and shit, it's K Williams, right? Okay. So he's like, cool, I'll just be Chaos Williams, and then, like, for y'all, I'll be the Ox Fighter. I don't fuck with that. Yeah, it just, that, that seems dumb to have two nicknames. That's what fooled me. I, I'll be real, I, I took a hook on and I was like, oh, well, clearly I that's wish, his real name because he has a nickname, the Ox Fighter. So was, correct. I wish that he would just be Kalen Chaos Williams. Kalen Chaos yeah. Williams sounds better than that's Chaos, dope. the Ox Fighter Williams. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I'm, 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 I apologize, people. I, 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 got, I got confused there. Um, but, yeah, so Chaos Williams, minus 115 favorite. He's been starching everybody within the first round. He hasn't made it out of the first round before this fight. Um, Michelle Pahey is known for being this super flashy, ridiculously huge, kind of just freakish welterweight. Um, not unbeatable. He has 11 losses, or he had 11 losses going into this fight. Um, but just the freak of nature of welterweight. I mean, absolute massive. Oh, yeah. Um, Jack City. Super athletic. Does like Both these guys are athletic stuff. freaks yeah. at 170. Yes, yes. So that's why it was, everybody thought it was going to be fireworks. And kind of like what happened, in my opinion, is when two BJJ black belts end up having a slugfest, it's like you have two super insane chaotic fighters, no pun intended. Uh, yeah. And then it kind of turned into like a technician's kind of faint fest. Like a like – a, Yeah. Like it, I mean, exactly that, honestly, yeah. man. It was – it was weird because, uh, I mean, obviously from the way I bet it, I thought this fight couldn't go the distance because Me someone too. was going to land a big shot, right? I, I literally turned to my wife and I go, hey, babe, you may want to watch this fight because it's not even going to take that much of your time to watch it. Like, I literally yeah, I, I was like, laughing I was... at work to people like, if there's one fight you don't miss tonight, it's going to be Chaos Williams and Michael Pahea, Michelle Pahea. Now, granted, fun fight to watch. Like, it was fun as fuck to watch. Yeah, I don't want to take away from how close and good the fight was. It just went differently and than I also, anybody expected. We should note, too, Cass Williams opened this fight at plus 170 and got bet all the way to being the favorite at minus 115. That's plus super. 170 he opened at. Wow, I didn't know that. I mean, Dude, I'm, I'm really huge. Glad you dropped that info. There was huge line movement in Williams' favor. The reason being, most people don't know, A, who that, Michelle Pena is. That this fucking decision even sketchier. Exactly. And I thought you might say that. Uh, oh man! So yeah, like a bunch, a bunch, like all the money on earth got poured in on Cass Williams and Michelle Pahea got no money. So I almost bet Michelle Pahea at the end just because at, at a pick him when he opens up as a damn near minus two hundred favorite. Like it's a good number to get him at. Right? Yeah, like the number there, the value is too good to pass. I now the you. problem with it is, is you go back to like, um, what am I looking for? Oh, Cass Williams' last fight, right? He's just. I mean, starching guys, right? Yeah, yeah. But but there is a handicapper I followed that brought up the point of before Chaos Williams' last four fights that were all first round finishes for him, he had been a decision every fight before that. Ah. And he has decisions against a guy that's seven and seven now, and a decision win against a guy that's seventeen and nineteen now. Okay. So it's like certain guys have figured out how to evade that power somehow that aren't necessarily great at fighting. Yeah, yeah. No, that uh, man, fucking Harrison. 
Man, this guy has the fucking info for y'all, boy. I'm so glad you brought that. That was that was great, bro. I'm just fucking out listening at this point. Just like, yeah, man, drop that knowledge. That was that was good well, shit, man. Um, even further, the handicapper that was talking about it said that he thought Williams would win the first round and Pahea would win the second and third. And yeah. that's when I that's when I said, "Fuck this! I'm not listening to this guy right now" because I didn't think that was true. I didn't. Uh, uh, the only thing I'll say is that I 100 percent would have bet the same thing you did. That it wasn't going the distance. I yeah. I think that that was like a bet the farm kind of lock, but that just goes to show y'all there's no such thing as a fucking bet the farmer. Um, because everybody, I mean, everybody thought that. I mean, apparently besides that one handicapper, but um, uh, he's, yeah. he's sitting there. And you know. I, that dude's in like a final. Like apparently he's in some competition amongst handicappers, and he's in the the final two. Like they're going to do a year showdown oh, or, wow. or a showdown this weekend for the year based on all their bets and who has the highest ROI on all the bets they've been throughout the year wins. So this dude knows what he's talking about, but that's a crazy world. That's a fun world. That's, that's wild. Um, but man, I just right, so. like, what would lead you to think that bro? Like for me and you, we're sitting here, we've watched the last 29 UFC events, 24 weeks straight right now we're sitting at what on earth would have made you or I think that Michelle Pahea and Cass Williams go to the, go to the decision. It has well, to be the what? thing that you said to start, right? Yep, that both yep. these guys are crazy strikers, so the trepidation from both of them has to be high so they both stand back and don't land those shots. Yeah, and I'm about to say, I learned from a betting perspective, I learned a lot last night because for this exact reason of, of – Last night was hard to bet. Sometimes Very you got to zig when everyone else is zagging. And, and of just <laughs> the, what we said about two crazy fighters sometimes make for a boring fight, which I don't think it was a boring fight, but you, you see what I'm saying. They're kind of like the two be- – like I already previously learned the lesson that two grapplers can make for a slugfest. This was like the next lesson to learn, I think, and like that that progression. Um, but, man, let's get into a round-by-round round because – Absolutely, man, yeah. I want to know how you score these rounds too because, like, t- t- they were terribly hard to score, terribly hard to score. I thought the first round – was maybe easier to score than the other two. I gave round one to Williams. Me too. He was, he was moving forward, and the volume was almost triple. And I'm not talking about just volume of thrown, volume of landed significant strikes. Yeah. No, I, I thought Williams, like, I honestly, my notes for Pahea in the first round were, he has a nice chin. If that's my notes for you in the first round, you probably lost that round. Well, and, like, Pahea was, like, just fainting, fainting, moving, crazy footwork, crazy footwork, but just not throwing and not landing. Like, I think Pahea, and I'm not, try- I'm not trying to lean too heavily on the numbers, but in a, in a fight this kind of crazy and, and murky, sometimes it's good to lean on the numbers. Um, I, I think in the first round, Pahea landed 12 shots. 12. That sounds right. Yeah, and I think uh, Homeboy landed, what, 31 or something like that? 34? 30s. Yeah, yeah, in the 30s. So, like, it was damn near triple. It was damn, damn near triple. Near triple. And, and, and now they weren't all, you know, square, like, super now, effective, but... Now, here, when you say that, we're going to get into it next fight, but I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up to begin with. Chino Vera outlanded Jose Aldo. Huge. Like, I the know. numbers, if you look at the I numbers, the, but those numbers don't tell the story of that fight. Uh, we'll get into it. it. We'll, we'll get, get into, into it. it. We'll get into it. Uh, all right. So, uh, so yes, a round one Williams volume moving forward. I thought completely control. I mean, super I low activity for Pahea, by the way. Like I even made a note. Yeah. No, I made a note on my, uh, on my, or my, in my book that like both these guys were low activity, yeah, which yeah. leads to your point And that handicappers point of like, or the same point of like Rose or not Rose, uh, Lewis and Ganu. When there's that much on the line and one strike from either side, no one wants to – it's like nuclear weapons. Yeah. No one wants to shoot the nuke because you know one's coming back. Yeah. No, that's a good analogy, man. And, um, yeah, and, and so there was – like I said, there's – Pajaya was doing such good fainting and such good footwork. I just felt like if he would have pumped some jabs somewhere in the midst of that – Leg like kicks, those, jabs, like the there's a lot of shit. for him to win. Like it's almost just, like he had the meat and potatoes, but he had none of the sides to dress yeah. it and make it a dinner. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he did a lot of things good in that first round, but I just I don't see how you can give him the round by inflicting zero damage, landing next to no significant strikes. It's not like he had a takedown. Like, like what the fuck did – I don't know if people did give him the first, but if they did, I don't know what it was that – that got him the first. Like, I, I, I didn't look up the scorecards officially for this fight, and I absolutely should have. 
my mistake, yeah. everyone. No, no, but, either, but but I would assume no judge could have given that rip to Bahia. I don't know what you would have given it to him based on. And then round two, I thought razor thin. But I thought really confusing too. I thought Williams landed cleaner shots in round two than he landed in round one. He landed like more meaningful, cleaner, like harder shots in round two. I thought than he did in round one. And so like, I gave it to him off of that. Like, I I honestly didn't have it that thin, to be quite frank. Like, maybe – like, I don't know. I'm not saying it was a landslide. I'm not saying it was a 10-8 domination. But I thought it was Williams – I mean, he, he once again, almost the same volume ratio that applied to round one applied to round two. He, he uh, it maybe not tripled but doubled. I mean, he, it was way more volume. I, I want to say he got close to doubling him in volume, but in strikes landed as well, it was, like, a little less than twice as much. But also, it was some, like, shitty strikes that didn't really mean anything. That were, like, getting counted. Couple, yeah, but there was also, like, I don't know. I thought there was a couple of cleaner lands. Like, there may have been more shitty lands. But the couple of clean lands that he did land in two were cleaner than the clean ra- that he landed in round one, if that makes sense. Like I not- agree, but I also felt like Pahea had landed a lot more shots in round he two. He did. No, no, Pahea's And they were, like, pretty up. clean, too, though. Like, when he was la- – he wasn't landing as much, but he was landing some really, like, flush shots. Yes. No, I But agree. he was also missing some shots completely. Like, that's the weird thing about Pahea's style is that, like – Everything is so from left field that, like, some things are going to land completely great and some things will miss entirely. But it's all in the same window, and it's, like, it's so hard to score his fights, man. Yeah. No, it's, it, it is. And it's just visually it gives you a lot to look at. I didn't and he see- moves so much and he throws so much weird shit that, like, as a judge, maybe even as me, perhaps not as you, though, from the way we're talking about scoring it, I might be swayed by those movements and those flashy techniques. I feel you. I feel you. I because I that's exactly kind of the lens I looked at it through. I was like, this is all, you know, all all flash, all no flash. substance. Yeah, bro. Like I was just like, he's not like you. I mean, he did land a few in the second, but I was like, I don't. This is a whole lot of nothing. Like a lot of just fluff. I don't know, but uh, I mean, well, I, how'd you how'd you score the third? Because I thought the third got even closer than the second. Yeah. So I actually scored the third. For Pahea, um, the takedowns, and then the, he finished the round super strong. So I actually that was score the third I, for Pahea. I did as well. Obviously, if I scored the second for him, I was going to score the third for him. But, like, dude, round one was the only clear round. Like, two and three, I thought, were super murky. Super murky. I – man, I feel really good about how I scored that fight. Now, granted, I didn't watch this one twice. The next fight, I watched twice. But the, this You fight, know what? I even went back this morning and watched Aldo Vera again while I was in the shower earlier just so I could watch it twice with you. I still stand by it. So did I. So did I. So so the Bahia Chaos Williams fight, I could maybe stand to watch uh, – maybe stand to watch again. I, I got to say, though, when they raised Bahia's hand, my jaw dropped. I, I was, like, actually, like – had, like, a visceral reaction. I was like, fucking bullshit. Like, I felt, like, some type of way about it. Like, I, that's why there's two hills I'm dying on, and this is one of them, bro. Like, I – because the thing is, bro, when I watch a fight, when I think it has a razor-thin round, like, I did it in the um, the Pettis fight, the round one of the Pettis fight. I was like, oh, this is so close. I'm not having a hard time scoring it. And I was like, what do you think, Harrison? I didn't feel that way about any of these rounds. Like, I felt super confident in my score – in, in all three of these, like, I thought Williams won two and or one and two, and Pahea clearly won three. Like I just, I feel really good about that. Now, so, two was closer than one. I'll give you that. 